Hey guys, welcome to today's video. This is the second part of my lathe series where I'm rebuilding my Chinese mini lathe. The first part was converting the motor to a VF drive. If you haven't seen that already, check out the little cutscene up here. So this, this part's covering the topic of the controller unit because obviously implementing the VF drive meant that the controls were no longer on the lathe. So the controls that I'm putting back, obviously most of it for me is safety related. You want that stop start button by the by the lathe, not at the inverter. I wanted the speed control to hand so I'm not leaning over the machine. I mean some people lean over the machines and look. I mean if you guys sorry to say if you're squeamish don't ever check this out but if you look up uh, Russian lathe accident and you see this image, I can assure you that this bloke ends up in more than one place in the workshop. So I'm fully aware of what a lathe can do and why I want those controls back by me and not on the wall where I have to lean over the machine. Also about putting the chuck guard back because, hey, we all know that... Um, the chuck key can be left in. Now, again, this is all subjective, but hey, I'm not stupid. I mean, come on, some guys are, look. So I wanted that just for peace of mind to be put back so that it's there. So I'll stop waffling on. Let's crack on with how I've put the controls back at the lathe and covered all the sort of safety aspect of these things. While I was reinstating the controls back onto the lathe, I thought I'd take the time to add some more features to it. The first feature I wanted to add was a temperature gauge so that I could monitor the heat of the motors. I feel that I needed this for peace of mind due to the fact that the previous two motors that I'd had that were the 110 DC motors were prone to overheating and I wanted to monitor that while I was running the lathe. The second feature I wanted to add was a tachometer. This would allow me to monitor the speed of the lathe to help improve my machining process. For the tachometer to work I was going to need a flag on the main shaft and a bracket to hold the sensor. I repurposed these from an old piece of angle and then sprayed them up to make them look a little bit better. To fit the bracket, I then drilled and tapped a couple of holes on one of the gear castings. This allowed me to mount the bracket and then fit the sensor. I fitted the flag on the main shaft and locked that in place. Next stage was to line the sensor up with the magnet on the flag. Okay, that magnet's trying to troll me. I'm just gonna have to move it out of the way. Once I'd got the nut and washer on, I then raised the sensor up to line up with the magnet, just so there's enough clearance, but also close enough that the magnet will register on the sensor. Now that that's all the hardware in place, I'll continue working on the control box to get that correct. I'll cover the wiring on this sensor later in the video when I'm dealing with all the other wiring. Gave it a quick try just to make sure that the magnet wasn't catching and it was all just about spot on. The other sensor was the temperature sensor. Now I just glued this in place. This was just to keep it close to the metal on contact to get a true reading, but also to prevent the airflow from the motor cooling the sensor and giving me a false reading. Uh, 
earlier in the clips, you'll have seen me starting to fabricate up a stainless steel box. Now this is all part of making the, the control box look that little bit better. I wasn't happy with where the old sticker was on and I thought I'd take the opportunity to make it look that little bit better while angling the controls at the front so that I could see the readouts while I was using the lathe. The stainless steel came from an old cooker hood. It was actually the leftovers from the chimney that you would fit normally to the wall. This gave me the perfect opportunity to upcycle some materials and reuse them in a better purpose. I then decided that I would rivet this all together. Now I have a welder, but this stainless steel sheet is far too thin to use a welder. So I thought I would make this a little bit more interesting and have that kind of aeroplane look about it where I rivet it all together. I decided I'd use copper rivets to give it that contrast to just make it that little bit more unique. Okay, so I think this turned out to be actually a happy accident. But I'm going to be honest and show you that I make mistakes. I could have just edited this out and hidden it all, but I didn't quite get the box front section aligned correctly. And I wasn't happy with how I'd folded the lower edge. So this gave me an opportunity to remove it, correct it and make it look better. And actually I feel with the rivets through the middle that it turned out far better than I imagined. Okay, so I'm going to try and cover this fairly simply. I've had to draw my own diagram because I actually managed to break the first tachometer that I bought by wiring it up incorrectly. Now, there is not a lot of information on the back of the label on the back of the tachometer that explains the wiring correctly. Now, it never came with instruction manual, so there was a bit of confusion as to how it should be wired, as you may be able to see from the sticker on the back. So I'll break this down into two sections, which is the first part is the power. Now, the power supply to the tachometer is terminals one and two, one being the 12 volt supply and two being the ground that goes back to the inverter. The second part of the wiring is wiring in the sensor. Now the sensor is a three wire sensor. The first being brown, which is a 12 volt supply, which goes to terminal one. The next connection is the blue cable, which goes to terminal three, which is labeled as a ground sensor and but it's not it's essentially the negative to the sensor not a negative to do with the power supply which is where I got confused and then the third cable is black which is wired to terminal 5 which is actually labeled as a positive and again it's a positive for the sensor not a positive to be connected to a voltage supply which is where the confusion for me came in. So in layman's terms, you're literally connecting the power supplies to one and two, and then you're connecting that sensor as described on the diagram to those other three ports going into the tachometer. And that have nothing to do with voltage going into other cables. Okay, so now we're on to the chuck guard. Now this is being wired into the stop start button so that it cannot be started while the guard is up. I had to repair this guard slightly and put a piece of angle on the top of it because the old part was made of plastic that had broken. 
but this is being put back for me for peace of mind that to ensure that the the chuck is guarded when i want to run it it also stops me becoming later down the line more complacent where i just ignore it and possibly have injuries and that's a lot of the time where these things happen where you get used to a machine you presume it's going to be safe and then it bites you in the arse so the wiring to this is really simple. I'll explain that later in with the full wiring to the controls because it's linked in with the stop start buttons. But in the meantime, this is just adjusted and bolted so that it doesn't catch the chuck and I can move that slightly if required later. Okay, so now all the controls are in, it's time to get the wiring in place. We no longer need to worry about the motor wiring. We're now moving into the next step, which is using the sub controls on the inverter, which are these here. This wiring will be for the speed control, the stop start and the forward and backwards switch. But before we do that, we need to change some other settings in the control box to allow us to control these things externally. To activate the wiring for these controls, we need to enter into the program mode. There we will select program 10 using the up and down keys. Then we use the function to select the output type and we need to move this to number two which is the external wiring control. You then press the function key to leave the programming mode. The other program that needs changing is program 11. This also will be set to external controls, which is number two. This will allow the stop start button to operate externally. The next part that we need to work out is which of the external wiring selections we need to use. These are the X numbers. And as you can see from this drawing, we need X6, which is the external reversing switch, and X4, which is the forward switch to activate the start. Now that we know what we're wiring in, here is the diagram of the wiring from the inverter that is required to go to the, all the lathe controls. As you can see, I've run a common line to all the controls and then the live supplies from what was required for each feature. So the, the 12 volt supply goes to the tachometer, the X six feature goes to the forward reverse switch the x4 goes through the lathe guard then to a switch that is a latching switch now the original one came with a volts switch and this doesn't have a voltage supply so it had to have a latching switch fitted the next part to wire in is the speed control. This is wired in through the common 5 volt and VIL. Now the common and the 5 volt can be switched over depending on the direction you need to turn the knob for the speed control. But the one that will always go to the middle is the VI1 which then gives you the range and frequency to change the speed on the lathe.
So guys, thanks for watching. Um, I'm really happy with how this has turned out. I've tarted the box up, it looks great. I love how I've got the contrast of the stainless steel with the copper rivets. Great to see that you guys have got this far through the video. If you have any questions about what I've done, don't hesitate to ask in the comments. And obviously the support is greatly appreciated. Obviously I've now got all my controls back, so I can't make any silly mistakes with like leaning over the machine as you saw in the beginning of the video um, so that's it I have got one more video um, but this will be covering the topics of the improvements actually on the carriage and the controls and all that sort of thing that I'm going to ravel up into one video so that I don't drag it out too much uh, so I hope to see you in that next video